If you're thinking about joining EVE Online, you could uh, play for free. Your friend has personally invited you to play EVE Online through the recruitment program. You can play for free as an alpha pilot with an added bonus of 1 million skill points. Actually, that's uh, 20 days of training. So it's 20 days of training as a member's account without any benefits. So the 1 million skill points will help you get a lot further. I wish I knew about this before I started. And if uh, 20 days of free training wasn't enough, that would be able to get you into the battleship on the first day. Just crazy. You'd be able to do so much on day one with the 1 million skill points, but they also give you 50% off on your first month of membership. So if the $15 was expensive, maybe $7.50 isn't so expensive. Especially if we could find a way to plex for free. So we pay the $7.50 and then we see if we can pay for the account just by playing the game. Plus you get uh, daily login gifts for the first 15 days you log in. And then um, if you want all of these amazing, amazing benefits, all you have to do is click the link in the description. And then I think you're also added to my friends list so you could talk to me and then maybe we could help each other out in the game that is EVE Online. All right, so now we're back with another EVE video. So daily starter gifts, you collected day three. Today is the third day. So uh, we just did some industry last night. We were flying around. We were flying all around perimeter trying to find everything. So it looks like maybe we even get um, this booster will speed up your character's skill training for 48 hours and we maybe get uh, 10,000 skill points. If we claim the reward, so. Oh, cool, and it goes to 25,000 sword upgrades. So we could close that then. So we have our character. Two skills are completed, mining level four. Um, So we were just working on our ship. So we were in, oh, perimeter. Perimeter is probably actually an amazing place to go. Perimeter has absolutely everything. I don't know why we would live in anywhere else. So I guess uh, the game changed a lot since I was gone away, because before, I choose you trade market was absolutely perfect but then I guess uh, no one uses it because the perimeter trade markets now exist it's basically also one one jump away from Jitta right so <clears throat> if we go to industry we could see our uh, industry jobs are probably probably well well on their way so we go to the top left to Neocon we go to industry we select the industry we were working on uh, three science jobs before we headed off. So we did come and collect those eight hours later, and then we were flying around. We found another station, actually, this one. So we put it for like, um, it was like 16 hours or something. So we have to wait another six hours. Yeah, that makes sense if you go to bed for eight hours and then you wake up and then you get distracted with EVE Online to get all of your um, blueprints uh, improved. So these are gonna be level nine blueprints. They were level eight. So there's also a better factory, right? The factory that we went on, it was like 20%, uh, 20% and 10%. This one is um, the production tower. So in perimeter, there's like a production tower. So it's for production. Give you like a structure roll bonus, 30%, 1%, 5%. Oh, so we didn't look into construction before. Before, Okay, so we will eventually. So this place, it has a high tax and a high cost index. So it's probably not the best, but it is It is the best for beginners because it pretty much seems to have um, all of these modules because you could fly around looking at player stations forever and you'd be looking at these. Because I know I was always looking around for how to get um how to make frigates for with a job duration and a material consumption but nobody would have those in their station because it's not worth uh, putting these rigs on your station for frigates so now perimeter seems to have uh, this amazing station with absolutely everything with all of the rigs which is perfect for a new player to get into industry because um, then you'd be able to have all the benefits so basically we could go look in um, industry let's look at the other places too right this is all in perimeter one jump away from the main trading hub so perimeter tranquility trading tower so basically when you're looking on the regional market everybody seems to sell stuff here and jitta as well right because if we're looking for if we're just looking for like ores or something we're looking at all the ore prices and compressed prices and we we're trying to figure if we should refine them but we found out we there's no reason to refine them you lose money 
So there's Tranquility. So there's this uh, refinery in the training center. And then here's Jetta 4, Moon 4, Caldari Navy Assembly Plant. One jump away. So you can even see it's in the same region as the main trading hub. So you can actually compare prices and probably buy everything here. So we looked at the market and then the Tranquility Research Labs. So last episode, we just did um, research. We were upgrading our material efficiency. So in the research labs, they have three different stations. One is for like, uh, one is for production, one is for research, one is for trading. So uh, if we go to the research, it'd be 30 and 20. The one that we found originally was 20 and 20. Although the tax rate was a lot better, right? The tax rate was like 0.1% or something. So it costs a lot less to install research jobs, although research jobs aren't really expensive anyways, they're really cheap to put in, so you just come here, you could uh, improve your time efficiency research as well, that seems to be fully upgraded, and then the copying 30-20%, that seems to be fully upgraded, so this is just some high security stations. If you were to go to a low security station, they could actually put um, better rigs in their sh in their station. So, actually, for high security, this would be the best place to go. So we came here. We'll show you how to get here probably. Hey, you could just um, go to the left hand side here to the map, and then you could just like um, here is Jitta right here, right? If you were to go to the right to go to the search bar, if you were to search um, Jitta, if you type J I T A and then you click on it maybe it brings you to it or if you like set destination or something so here's the main trade up here is perimeter right you could type in perim oh you just type in perimeter and then perimeter comes up so here's the place where we're at it's literally right beside jitta and then here's the i choose you trade up so it's right beside jitta but it's in an another uh solar system or constellation so the regional market's not going to be the same. And then also we found out here we could also fly over here from the I Choose You market. And here's a whole new market to explore. And then um, the perimeter. Yeah, it's all linked in with Jitta. There actually is a little shortcut over here. If you don't want to go through Jitta, like if you were to go over here. Because you could avoid it if you really wanted to. Let's say we're going to the I Choose You trade up. So let's say if we're going to set our destination here. Oh, it would uh, send you to Jitta. Do not avoid Jitta. All right. So if you didn't want to go to a system for some reason, because you were carrying hundreds of millions of things, and if you go through Jitta, people are going to destroy your ship probably. So if you were setting your destination here, you'd be like, oh, we're going through Jitta. So you could actually right click Jitta, you could say avoid Jitta, and then it would uh, try to find another route. So you could go this way, that'd be pretty cool, there's maybe pilots there. I think uh, this led to a place, right? Set destination, or you could just like set your own destination. And then um, add waypoint maybe. Yeah, and then you could just create your own path that uh, nobody would probably be in these systems, because they're away from the Jitta. Should, uh, Stargates, I guess. So, oh no, we're just saying there's a way to avoid a system if you don't want to go through there, but it probably is quicker to go through there. So, we could just go here, right click, and uh, remove waypoint, right click, and then remove waypoint, and then all of our destinations are gone. I think that was just the way because, um, actually, over here. Over here is where we originally set up our uh, our production facility. It's actually only two jumps away from Jitta. Yeah, we don't even have to. So from perimeter, we could just uh, fly over here and then fly over to the Movolian system, which had that uh, production center we were looking at before. So maybe we'll just look at the production center quickly, right? Because the old one, it was a little bit worse for research. It was like two jumps away. We go to facilities, we sort by jumps, uh, current system within five jumps. So we're just looking at all the facilities here. There's probably other facilities. So if you could possibly find like uh, another, another station that's kind of exactly the same, except for just like a few jumps away, like the one that we found there. So if you're not worried about the 10% research speed, which you probably actually should be, then maybe you could just go over there. 
So it'd be just over here. Almost did a 0.1% tax. This was the station we first found. This station it was like, uh, oh, 20, 10%. Oh, maybe it wasn't. 1% rigged. Research T E M E and copying bass. This one might be good. 15 and 24%. So there is other good ones. The tax rate would be lower. Low tax rate produced an event. So basically there is other there is other stations to do industry at, but here in the perimeter, right beside Jitta, we're in the refinery. So actually, also when you're refining, you could go around the world and find player owned refineries and they'll give you a increase to the base yield, although we don't really uh we don't really refine anything because it doesn't really seem worth it because if you refine it you lose money right but maybe if we go to view market details if we can just uh buy some or something just some in the station or we could just sort by jumps try to find something in the station system dance this bar foul this bar so if we could just find a oh, 17 that's all right and we're looking at uh, prices around the world as well, like around the around the galaxy. It turns out um, all these raw the raw minerals, you could actually go fly somewhere else in the universe, go buy Valdisbar for like twelve, and then bring it back to Jitta and sell it for like seventeen or eighteen. It's crazy. Same with the dance Valdisbar. You could go find it for twelve somewhere, bring it here, sell it for eighteen. So a good way to probably trade, you just go pick up minerals from around the world and then bring it back here and sell or other stuff, right? Because you could be a hauler and a trader. You could go fly around, find where people are selling stuff for cheaper or go put buy offers in. We haven't put any buy offers in yet. We've just basically um don't have any money to put any in. We had to sell some things. So maybe market transactions. So we probably sold a whole bunch of things sold one two three four we only sold four things so we were selling compressed ore so maybe it would have sold faster in jet or something but basically if you were to go to valdespar you right click it and we say reprocess and then in the reprocessing window on a normal station the base yield would be 50 percent and in a player-owned station, it would be up. It would be like 52%, 54%, or 55%. So 55% is the highest you can get in high security. Another reason to go to perimeter. So you could just come here, and then even if we refine it, we say we still lose money. Some um, valid parts actually a little, a little off too, because when we were doing the math, we were going to reprocess like um. We we're gonna reprocess uh, one inventory, which is fifty thousand. So it was gonna be worth like um, nine hundred thousand, and then when we reprocessed it, it was actually gonna be worth six hundred thousand. So if we were to reprocess this, if we were to reprocess like fifty thousand at once, we'd be losing three hundred thousand. So we decided not to reprocess it. But if you go to the uh, go to the mineral, you can see Valdisbar. It's like fifteen. If you go to compressed Valdespar, it's like 1800. Go to compressed, um, oh, let's go to concentrated Valdespar. Compressed concentrated Valdespar sells for more. So basically, it takes up less inventory space. That's all you want to do when you're mining. You just want to, you could go anywhere in the galaxy that has a refinery that allows docking access and just um, check these structures out, right? You could go undock. So you just right click it and you'd say compress. Pretty much. Maybe later it's better to refine things, but for now our refinery skills are terrible and we're only in a high security station. So we're just trying to undock from the station. And then the game has to load up because uh, we haven't been outside yet. So it's a player owned station. You should be completely safe out here as we probably get destroyed for some reason somehow. Um, but you have a should have a safety timer should be safe like 10 seconds when you exit the station or something and Then you're gonna be tethered at the station. So even though it is right by Jitta, uh, just like the I choose you trade up You could just stand out here literally all day watch everybody see what they do and learn everything about the game uh, Watch them warp in and warp out 
so this would be general perimeter um, refinery so actually we saved we saved them right if we right click in space perimeter trading production trading research oh, okay tr so it doesn't have a it's not big enough to show everything but that's cool perimeter trading you can tell this is the production facility you can tell this is the research facility you can tell this is the trading facility so all we had to do was uh, find perimeter tranquility refinery oh R would be refinery okay so essentially you could just right click it you could say save location you have already saved the location stored here do you want to proceed with this no so you would save it so if you were looking at another station in space going to save the research lab we could right click it we could say save location oh we already saved that one so if we were to save this one so you could uh, label it right so you can put in perimeter so it's actually we should probably rename the ones that we have basically you could uh, change the label you could be like perimeter refinery i don't even think you could have to put perimeter you could just put like uh, refinery because the the thing is going to be saved in your area anyway so we could put per refinery cancel and then after you save some places it would be here just like i'm um, saving in the asteroid belts and then in the top left here, you could go to personal people and places. And then you could go go to the places tab. And you could even uh, look at them. Maybe we could edit them. Edit location. All right. Perimeter. <clears throat> so we could just say this is the perimeter T refinery or something. Let's submit that. So that should make it uh, easier to find when we right click, right? So we can edit location. We can say prim. Uh, this was the production production center. So we could submit. And this was the research lab. So we could um, go edit the location. We could say prim. was uh, research so now we have some locations saved and then we renamed them that would be easier to find so now if we right click in space we could just go to production research refinery uh, and then we should save the trading hub so if we go here and we try to find the tranquility trading hub actually another easier way to do this if you didn't uh, want to go through all these this list here you could go over here to um, perimeter and then you should be able to right click and uh, show information and then you could uh, go down to the structures tab and this will show all of these structures around here actually so you can see these are all just uh, different player owned structures here so production ammo and equipment here you can maybe look at it to see what it does and then um Thank you. Look at the industry window more for that. We're just looking for the tranquility runs, right? We got the tranquility production, tranquility research, tranquility refinery, tranquility trading tower. So let's um save location. So we could say prim. Uh, let's just say prim trading submit. So now we just saved another location so now forever in the system we can just right click and then know exactly where we want to go and they're right across from each other so here is the refinery and actually in space if we look over here should be yes here's the production center or something well we're we're currently at the refinery so if you go to the production center if you go to warped within zero kilometers should be this place over here they put them right beside each other yep so here's the production center so after you get resources from there maybe you would come here and then you dock up at this station then you could uh, sell everything on the trading station so this is basically where we're going to be producing things just because it has all those uh, extra rigs and everything Although the tax rate is so high, so we can still look around, right? So if we were to go to industry and we brought our blueprints here, we would actually be able to use them for construction. So if we were to put this thing in, 
Uh, then it would show us it would take um, total estimated price 4000 and then total estimated price 8000 so we upgraded the material efficiency to level 8 so it's going to take 8% less materials and then uh, we could upgrade the time efficiency as well which is going to make it uh, take less time to build job duration is uh, scales and implants minus 12% the structure roll bonus minus 30% and then the cost is um cost is still really cheap right so if we were to like uh, run 10 jobs in 30 minutes we might uh oh Oh, that'd be the total price, so we might make a 4k in a half an hour. Or if you go to 20 runs, it might cost them um, 8,000. We might make them um, 8,000 in one hour. So, seems to be a really low profit item. We could uh, research this thing. We could even uh, sell the blueprints by themselves, right? If we were to like 1,000 runs or something. Although, we'd want to research our skills first. But generally, in two days, we could turn. 400,000 into 800,000 so that sounds absolutely terrible so we would probably want to find better things to produce later unless we get these minerals for cheaper but generally generally you'd want to find a really good item to produce to give you good profits for one day of duration and then these skills there's also skills to help you with uh, science and industry so you go to your character sheet you can go to production and then um, industry, so there's mass production. You could run one additional job. So I think we we're trying to get that, but then we were thinking um, we should just get mining and industry out of the way because these are gonna take a long time. Then advanced industry, 3% uh, reduction in manufacturing time. So you could produce things a lot quicker. And then same with um, science. Oh, science, when you're researching the blueprints, you got research. 5% uh, to blueprint manufacturing time research per level so you get 25% uh, research speed there and then metallurgy for 5% research to material efficiency per skill level so you can get another 25% speed there as well and then laboratory operation allows you to research more blueprints at once so basically we're just chilling out here in perimeter right beside Jida, and then I think we could go mine things and um, so if you go look on the map, you can go explore everywhere here. If you go to your personal assets, you could see perimeter. You probably have stuff in perimeters. You could always set your destination to find your way here. And then we just put something in the Jitta for the main <coughs> the main trade hub of the game. So we could always find it in our personal assets. And then the I choose you trade market where is a good base to base off just outside of Jitta. Just one jump from Jitta. So if we go, um, yeah, do not avoid Jitta. We have no reason to avoid Jitta. We go to these places. There's also, so here's the system, right? So you could go here, you could like go explore the system. Although probably not that one because it's low security. So if we were in perimeter, we could go see uh, what's over in this system. There's a uh, seven, six, seven system. I mean like uh, security zero six. So we go explore there maybe. We can see the perimeter system leads out over to this constellation. So we can maybe go explore this constellation and see what's over here. And then um, as long as we're really close to the main trading hub, we shouldn't really have any problems because it would just be like uh, three jumps back. It's basically how we would have found our place here. So we would have gone here, we said here's Jidda, and then we'd go, um, so what's over here, one jump from Jidda. And then we found the production place so we could actually research things for a cheaper cost, although a little bit slower out here. And then there's uh, more places to explore out in this direction. And then if we were in Jidda, we just go over here to Sebeski to the I Choose You Trade Hub, which is one jump away. Not many people come here, it looks like. So definitely a good uh, low key area. Then if we wanted to explore further, we could go to this constellation. Although, probably not, because it's low security, so you die over there. Or we could fly over here. I think we were over here for a little bit, looking at the prices of everything and seeing who was over here. So there's a uh, system over there. Oh, this is where our homes came from. <coughs> this is where we started the game. Alright. So this must be the career agent's place, because if we go there, we go to stations. School of Applied Knowledge. Yes, this is probably where we started the game, actually. So we could even, like, go back home and revisit the place. We could go 
set destination, where did we start the game from, and a whole bunch of places and start to explore the solar system. But um, I think we were mining. No, we weren't mining. We were mining for a little bit, and then we're like mining was getting boring. So I think we tr just trained um spaceship command just to get the Caldari frigate to level three and the Caldari destroyer to level one, right? Because if you go to history. We're just training a Kalanta Industrial to transfer minerals and then industry and then a Kaldari Frigate, Kaldari Destroyer. So we're in the frigate and we're running level 1 security missions. So I think that's what we're doing today. If we go to the ship hangar, let's try to find where our Merlin was. Was it in the I Choose You trade market? Maybe they were. Maybe we kept all of our combat ships. Oh, the comrade is over here. So we can go over here, we could um, set destination to the market over there. Go pick up our Comrat, our destroyer that we never did anything with. Then my uh, inventory should be empty, right? We don't have anything to lose anyways. And then once we actually start making uh, more money, we'll be able to increase our training speed. So... Basically, before you go to bed, or before you log off, you would um, go to your training queue and then you'd be like, is there anything I want to train tonight that I would want to use tomorrow? So we just uh, we just put the ship skills on, that's it. So little things and then uh, these can train while we're doing other things. We're going to have the mining level 4, so maybe we can get minor level 2s pretty soon. So now we're... <clears throat> actually in the Jedha, Jedha system. So there's gonna be Tengus and Carousels and Maulers and Stratioses and Tornadoes and Condors and Bantams and Vexors. All of them are gonna be looking to destroy your ship if you're carrying anything of value. So considering they probably scanned our ship while we were there, we had an empty inventory, so they had no reason to destroy us. Although if we were going through there and we had like a hundred million stuff in our inventory we would have probably actually lost our ship so be careful about that don't uh, don't fly through space with everything in your inventory or if you do then um avoid the jetta system just go around the jetta system hopefully it's safer that way so now we're based over here so maybe the perimeter would actually be a really good place, the perimeter trading station. So I think we're just gonna go pick up our Comorat, then I think we're just gonna go to the trading station to maybe equip it with items, and then maybe just go do combat. We could even go to the Jitta main trading hub, that would make sense, because our Comorat's gonna be worth like 1 million or 2 million or something. It's not gonna be an expensive ship to destroy. Then maybe we could just do security missions, or we could do delivery missions or something. Cause um, mining, I guess mining absolutely always is good for the first day. Cause you're planning your character, you're thinking about everything, and then uh, you're just gonna be sitting there looking at all the windows. But if you're mining, you actually made progress. So we could go to the inventory. We could say ship hangar. We could actually pilot this thing. We couldn't. Uh, we couldn't pilot this thing before. We didn't have the skills, but now we can actually. So now if we go to personal assets, Jitta main assembly plan set destination. So perimeter is two jumps away. So if we undock, if we go to the Jitta system, we don't have anything in our inventory. If we do lose our ship, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> so this would be the absolute main trading hub. If you're looking for anything in the game, you'd maybe space up at the perimeter training hub. And then um, if there was anything that was really good price at the perimeter or the Jitta training hub, you'd probably go to either of them. So essentially, I think we're just going to fit the Kamarat and then maybe we're going to go find a level 1 security missions in the system. And then do those for a bit and then eventually once we get a cruiser we could do level two missions although some of the missions are a bit harder so level one missions we could just uh, burn through them on the frigate because actually we're pretty pretty quick on the frigate it's just the enemies had so much health because we're just um doing the level one security missions and then the enemies they fall i was so scared when i was running i'm like i'm only in a frigate i'm gonna get destroyed but actually 
actually the frigate's amazing. You just uh, activate the afterburners and then you orbit the enemy and then the enemies can't even hit you. It's pretty cool. So maybe we'll just uh, come back when we're in the Kaldarvi Navy trade hub. Or we'll just record, we'll just uh, warp to the place. So the main trading hub, we're here once again. Gonna be tons of tons of tornadoes, tons of carousels, tons of uh, condors and merlins and punishers and wolves and hectates ready to destroy your ship as soon as you come in. Thrashers and vigilance. There's so many ships outside the main trading hub. Any second, one of them could target your ship and lock onto you and destroy your ship. So consider your ship lost already. Although we did make it back to, oh, we did make it to the trade hub safely. So now absolutely everything is going to be available on the station. 1,400 guests. If we go to the regional market, we just want to fit out our ship, right? So we go ship equipment, just go turrets and bays, small uh, energy turrets. Maybe we go with um, hybrid turrets. We go with uh, blasters or rail guns. Rail guns are always good just because they have the increased attack range. So 125, 150, or 75. Let's just go with a 125 millimeter maybe. So view tails, I think we bought these ones before too. So if we sort by price, they're not expensive or anything. I think we could fit um seven on this ship. So we just have like one, two, three, four. Oh, oh turret hard point seven, yep. So this ship can actually have seven weapons on it, so it's going to be really, really good for destroying the enemies quicker. Then we go to the item hangar. So, actually equipped all these railguns onto the ship then. So we just hold and drag the railguns to the ship. So this is probably going to be much better than the frigate, and then probably the cruiser will be much better than this, although this could probably work pretty good. And I don't know if we need a missile launcher. Maybe we do. We want a 1MN afterburner. And then we probably want uh, something down there. So we go to the regional market. Oh. And then what do we need for the ship? We can maybe buy shield boosters. Yeah, you could just buy the shield booster one. Ship equipment. <clears throat> Small shield booster one. There you go. Yeah, you can just buy that and then throw that on the ship. Well, we could just uh, look at the window like this. We just go to ship equipment, then we would go to shields, right? Uh, shield. Go to shield boosters, small. Then it would just be small shield booster one. And then shield hardeners, adaptive shield hardeners, adaptive invulnerability field one. So just buy one of those. And we just need like overdrives or anything. Can we use damage control? Because I guess uh, damage control was one that we forgot about. <clears throat> damage control, we can use them. Level 2, we can't use. Level 1 might be good. So damage control just gives you resistances. So shield resistance is 7.5, armor 10, haul 30%. So it actually gives you more resistances. This one does like 12, 15, 40. So maybe damage control one isn't even really too bad. It's just like seven resistances. Maybe you would want the overdrives or something just to get more movement speed to fly faster. So let's just buy two override injectors. I don't think <coughs> our ship never goes below shield, anyways, really. So we could just put the override injectors onto the ship the small shield booster so usually when the afterburners on the bottom usually on the shield at the top the vulnerability over here so we just need a rocket launcher then so we just need well we could put anything in there we could put like a sure we'll just put a light missile launcher although we haven't even uh, learned learned how to use these have we light missile launcher one no, we haven't even learned how to use them. So this would be good without missile launchers. Requirements, missile launcher operation, light missiles. <coughs> we never learned this. 
All right, so is it sold at the station here? 30,000, 60,000, no, it's not. So we could go to any other station and buy it for 30,000, or we could buy it here for 60,000. I guess that's not too much. So we buy the light missiles, and then you could um learn the light missiles, and then maybe just put it on your character sheet to learn it just so, uh, actually use the weapons so missile launcher operation oh we need a um missile launcher operation level two and then we needed light missiles level one so there we go in like uh one hour we'll be able to use these and then uh our mining and industry will still be training so we're still just doing that for a little bit so then we could go buy the light missile launcher and then we could buy ammunition for it right so we could just go station there's one available here for really cheap buy it then we just wanted ammunition so we just needed both of the ammunitions we needed um hybrid charges small uh standard charges small one of the antimatter charge because that would probably be one of the better ones so we probably want like um ten thousand Yeah, cause we're gonna go through it a bit. So maybe, maybe like 6,000 or something. 6,000. 6,000 charges would work. It would cost you 100,000. And then, I don't know if we wanna iron charges. Really good for long range, but their damage is so bad. I think we just want the highest damaging, and then we just go within range of the enemy. So 6,000. We fell it. Alright. And then we got the light missile launcher. Is gonna say it's offline until we learn the scale. That's perfectly fine. And we just want uh, missiles. We just want light missiles. Um, standard light missiles. And then the scourge. Scourge always seems to be the best for some reason. So we could just be like um. Which is like one thousand. We're barely gonna be using these things. We only have one turret. So we just go like six hundred or something. Six hundred scourge light missiles. Okay, and then we can just put them in the missile launch, right? Oh no, we can just put them in the ship inventory when we learn them then. So now we got some ammunition, although that barely takes up any space. We could always come back for more antimatter charges, but I think we'll just buy another 5,000. So now we got lots of ammunition. We're not gonna have to worry about coming back for a while. And that's absolutely everything we need. I think there was just rigs for extra speed or something incomplete scale so let's um you have unclaimed items in your redemption queue let's just take these here 10,000 scale points redeem okay so we got the reward defensive ship module starter gift cerebral accelerator so maybe we won't redeem them in jitta right so if we go to personal assets we can go to the trading place over here or we could just put them here. Whatever, we're in Jeddah, the main trading hub. We go, we had some things to redeem. We had a suit here. We could um redeem all of the items. The selected items will go into the station hangar of the station you were in. It'll directly inject 10,000 scale points. That's all right. So now we have uh, 1 million and 45,000 scale points saved up. And we redeemed everything, and then it's just the daily login complete. So we get uh, another thing in a uh, 13 hours frigate class starter ship. So I don't even think the ship's probably gonna be too good, but there we go. We could uh, use this for something. Okay, we could save it or something. Show information. It will expire. Oh, okay. So you have to be careful, right? Attributes. When does it expire? Expiry data 2020-21. So you only have a limited time to use this. Maximum pilot age 45 days. Alright, so you can't save this up. Boost duration for 48 hours for 2 days. Alright, so before the year is done, we'd want to use this thing. So we'd want to think about this, right? Because, um... If we get a character, if we go to character, if we go to um, implants, or if we go to attributes or something, 
if we were to remap before using this or if we don't have to remap we could just um add some uh what are those implants augmentations no implants or boosters basically we could get our implants to make our skills train faster so we have that it's a good thing they give you things to train faster than a defensive module ship so what is this show info So I think we're just gonna go to the left here. We go to the agency. We could do the career agents. The career agents would be amazing. We could go to agents and missions. We could go to agent finder. And then we could go security level one, any distance. So we're looking for people in the Caldari State Corporation. I think we're just looking for Caldari Navy, essentially. We could say you were one jump away. Oh, okay. And then just set the security status to high security. I think we already did did so many looking through the through these on um the other playthrough. So we could um set destination. And then maybe we could just run a bunch of level one security missions for a bit and then when we eventually are able to pilot the cruiser, we could run level two missions. Spaceship command, Clary Destroyer. So we'd have to get this to level three. So that would take a while, right? It would uh, get in the way of our mining and industry, so that's why you have to um, think about things, right? Our destroyer, we could use the destroyer for now. That would take like nine hours to train there, but we would be able to drive the Caldari cruiser then. So we could train missile launcher operation, mining, and then industry could train, and then uh, Caldari cruiser we could fly tomorrow probably. Um, yeah sometime tomorrow or the next day and then industry would be just about done so now we have the career agent on route uh, one, or, one or more modules is offline you have not learned how to use missile launchers yet so that's perfectly fine so we could undock from the station so we have a whole bunch of guns and ammunition we have afterburners we can go here jump through the screen or could we get the other afterburner? Docking permission requested. Docking so I was looking at that too on the other ship. On the cruiser, you could actually use a bigger afterburner to go go a lot faster. I wonder if you could do that on the ship. So we were able to get the cruiser up to like 936 miles per second. Because if we go to fitting, if we go to this ship, so maybe we'll just fit it out a little bit more. So we'll go with this thing, max velocity 618. If we go to regional market <clears throat> if we go to ship equipment and then the afterburners ship equipment propulsion then afterburners <clears throat> if you look at the so there's the 1mn so that's the basic one and then the 10mn requires a 50 50 power grid so we can't quite use it yet if we take one of the weapons off or something Oh, okay. So maybe later when we upgrade the scale, we can get a better afterburner. Because we'll just put this on just to show how much uh, it increases, right? If you go view market details, we could just buy one in the station for 30000 just to try it out, just to show what it's, it's supposed to do. So eventually, eventually your destroyer can go super quick. So we have the 10 MN. So if we just, um, if we just like unfit these to get 50 power in our ship. Maybe we could just turn these offline. So if we trained our skills later, well, how much power does that take on? 50, 10. Then if we throw the 10 MN afterburner on, if we were able to use that, our ship would be going uh, 1,239 miles per second. So we're going 600 miles per second. So eventually we'd be able to put on the 10 M and then we'd be able to actually our ship would be able to go literally twice as fast it'd be just crazy like 341 so it is stable it does it does take more energy to run the bigger afterburner i guess because so you can see capacitator with this on it would be stable you could burn with this forever this one you could only burn with this one for three minutes and 41 seconds crazy so that'd be a new goal get the 10 mn afterburner to double your double your open speed 
since we don't have the 50 we're getting close to we could do, get something to um increase our power but i don't think we'll worry about it for now we'll just put the small shield boost through the adaptive and vulnerability and we'll say eventually eventually our speed our ship will go over 1000 miles per second but for now it can go 600 miles per second on to the fall off range is 13 kilometers 8000 kilometers that's all right we're just uh flying really quickly so just undock and go to the career agent and i think we did everything i think we showed that our ship can be just insane at some point And I think um, we'll just meet at the agent, right? We can just jump through the start gate. And these guns, we could uh, group all the guns if we want, or we could keep them split up, right? Or you could create uh, smaller groups. You could be like, uh, if you wanted to create like three sets of guns or something, just like one more powerful set, and then drag them here. And then all of your guns are split up into different weapon groups. So you could shoot three different enemies. Or if you wanted to combine them, you could shoot uh, two different enemies. Or you could just put all the guns together and just shoot them all seven of your guns at once at the enemies. Or you could just ungroup them and them. If they're really weak enemies, right? You just uh, target an enemy, shoot him, target, shoot, target, shoot. And then you could just be attacking uh, seven enemies at once as long as you could target them. So this button to group all and ungroup all weapons, it's always really good to do. So I don't think we should have any trouble with level one security missions. Although we can we can do level three distribution missions, right? They are good for looking at um oh career agents. So we can do level three distribution for the for the uh, corporation that we started with, right? Calary State. They don't have to be Caldari Navy. Any corporation. Any distance high security. Oh, there'd be distribution, that's right. Any type. The only level 3 agents we can run is the uh, level 3 delivery mission. So, if you wanted to bring your badger, you could run level 3 delivery. Or you could bring your destroyer and run level 1 combat. And your cruiser could run level 2 combat. So, kind of like the same before, except we did a bit more industry at the beginning. So, you would give us a mission to do, available to you. Uh, go destroy the laboratory, get rewards. Perfect. So there's uh, combat missions to do in the game as well.